Hello, hello, and welcome to Shots Up, a Midwestern conversation about health, wellness, and how to stay safe while protecting our community, all right? Uh, my name is Bijou Starr. I am the midday host on 93.1 WZAK, and I am in Cleveland, Ohio. Did I say that already? Cleveland, hey now. Now, I am joined uh, with my friends from all over the Midwest, Radio One Cities, who are joining in this conversation today. So, and let y'all introduce yourselves. Yeah, you represent Radio One Cleveland. I got to represent Radio One Columbus in the capital city. I am Nails, the midday host here at Power 1075 1063 in the capital cities. And once we are talking about Ohio, I am Tropicana. I do middays here in Cincinnati. Okay, I will represent Indiana. I'm Tina Cosby uh, with WTLCAM 1310. The light also heard on 95.1 FM and 97.5. Uh, anyway, anyway, I'm right here in Indianapolis. We got a whole bunch of simulcasts. So thank you all for having me. <laughs> yeah, I can't get to all of them. I'll get there. But AM 1310, the light. We're on the light. You all over. You all over, Tina. <laughs> We're all over. We're all over. And I, I got to get it right. So, <laughs> and, and as Bijou mentioned just a moment, a few moments ago, you know, Carasaurus linked up with all of us here at Urban One and Urban One Columbus, Urban One Cleveland, Urban One Cincinnati, and Indianapolis to have a, a candid conversation about uh, what shots you need and how to stay, how to get healthy and stay healthy. All right. Uh, and today we're going to discuss uh, the Carasaurus mission of why vaccines are important and how they can keep our community safe. All right, thanks Nails. Now join me in welcoming our first guest of two for today, Donna Go, excuse me, Gabriel. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Doing wonderful, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us your role at Care Stores, your clinical background and which market you work in? Most definitely. I am Donna Gabbard. I'm Director of Women and Children's Health for CareSource uh, within the Ohio market. I am a registered nurse by trade. I've been in the business of managed care for more years than I care to share. Actually, <laughs> 20 plus years. Um, my clinical background has been with adults as well as children, uh, working with uh, children with special needs. And so this is a great opportunity for me as I think about working with women and children. Indeed. Donna, thank you so very much. Let's bring in our second panelist, and she is Keisha Zachary. Keisha, welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Keisha Zachary. As you already stated, I am the Director of Strategic Partnerships for CareSource Indiana. Um, I've been with CareSource for about seven and a half years. Um, and prior to coming to CareSource, I worked um, in the local community. I have a community-based background, um, mm -hmm. more on the social service side of things. So it was definitely a jump for me switching over to an insurance company. Um, however, I oversee our life services department, which is our department that works with our members on social needs. So all things outside of the doctor's offices. And I also manage the community marketing department. So those are our employees that are out in the community that go to events, um, things of that nature. So thank you for having me today. Thank you. Bijou. Thank you so much, Keisha. All right. So before we get this thing started, let's hear a word from our Care Source Ohio. Here's the thing about Medicaid. You don't have to be stuck with the plan you have. Right now you can switch to Care Source. My Care Source Medicaid is ranked number one in Ohio for quality. I get so much more than health benefits. Like my own life coach. And help finding a job. Does your health insurance do that? More people in Ohio choose CareSource than all other plans combined. Now you know why. We choose CareSource. CareSource. Your Medicaid. Your choice. First and foremost, I, I have to talk about CareSource, right? It is our passion. It is why we're here. CareSource is a managed care organization that has been in business for well over 30 years. Um, we serve 2 million plus members across six states, Ohio, Indiana, West Virginia, Kentucky, Georgia, and our last acquisition was Arkansas. So we have really grown over a 30 year time span. Uh, our mission is to make a lasting difference in the members, our, the lives of our members, um, for, 
to ensure that they have the best possible care and health and health wellness and outcomes. So we live our mission daily um, with that focus being to um, understand our members. We focus on population health and you may say, well, what does that mean? Well, with population health, our goal is to understand our members, what drives them, uh, what is basically impacting their health and wellness. We know that health and wellness is so much more than physical health. So we focus on social determinants of health and removing those barriers, again, to ensure our members' health, safety, and welfare. Thank you so much. All right. So can can I ask a question really quick? And my question is for uh, for Keisha. Uh, I just want to know why why do you feel why is um it important for public health? Uh, why are vaccines important for public health and especially the minority population? Absolutely. Um, so vaccines are important because it keeps us safe. Um, most people may not understand the reason behind vaccines, and especially in our particular community. There's so much history surrounding minorities and trust and all of those things. Um, we know those all too well. Um, but essentially, vaccines are there to provide us with immunity. Um, so the best way to describe it is that a vaccine um, gives you a small dose of whatever that particular um, disease is to where you build up immunity. Mm -hmm. um, so with the flu vaccine, we know that each year there's the request for us to get a flu vaccine. So they basically inject a small portion of that particular vaccine, of that particular strain so that your body can build its own immunity to fight off that particular strain should you come down with the flu in during flu season. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Donna, how can vaccines reduce risk? Vaccines reduce risk for all of the population involved. So we focus on receiving vaccines within our specific age groups, um, those vaccines that are recommended. However, while we are receiving those vaccines, for example, adults um, receive the flu vaccine as well as children, we are protecting others that do not have the ability to obtain those vaccines. So again, vaccines are, are protecting not only those receiving the vaccines, but those that are not. So that is the goal. It also will reduce the risk and the complications related to other um, health-related issues and concerns. So that's why vaccines are so very important. And it's across the spectrum from infants, children to through adulthood. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like to add on to that um, when you said protecting others. Um, recently with the COVID vaccine, one of the main reasons that I took my vaccine is because I wanted to be able to see my grandmother. Um, mm -hmm. She has so many different co conditions and she wasn't able to be vaccinated. And it's very, very hard to go to someone's house and you're talking through them through the window because you can't see them. Um, so I was extremely grateful to be able to vaccinate myself and my family because there's nothing like granny's hugs. <laughs> and so that was just a main point for me. Um, and we also have a member advisory council here in Indiana where, you know, our members, we talk with them to find out what their experiences are, what their needs are, any hesitancy that they may have surrounding the vaccine. And the two things were being able to see family and to be mm -hmm. able to travel. So I can relate to both of those things. Um, so it's not only protecting yourself, but also protecting those around you as well. Mm -hmm. And so Keisha, can you can you explain exactly how um, vaccines offer the protection and the immunity? Because there was so much confusion uh, surrounding this early on in, into the pandemic. And and sadly, some of it remains. But I, I think this is a great opportunity to, to give a great explanation uh, right. for those who are watching. Absolutely. So again, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you're basically giving your body a chance to build up how to fight off mm -hmm. something. So we've heard so many cases. Um, true story. So I had COVID prior to it being a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember what that felt like. So um, when I received my shot, I didn't experience any really symptoms because mm -hmm. I, my body had already built up immunity because I had already experienced it. 
Um, and also through my household, it kind of spread, but I was the person that probably experienced most symptoms because I had it first, not knowing what it was, husband still around me, kids still around me. So as it went through my family, everyone's symptoms kind of decreased more and more because they had built up immunity just from being around me. Does that help with the explanation? Yeah, it, it does help. It does help with the explanation. I want to just yeah. follow up a little bit more on that. And and you mentioned it, you you alluded to it uh, when you talked about vaccine hesitancy. Yes. Uh, you know, early on, and, and that was rampant in our community and in communities of color to the point mm -hmm. of paralysis in terms of just, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm going to get it. So yeah. has the messaging surrounding the the effectiveness and how the vaccines offer protection and immunity, has that improved or clarified any so that we can get away uh, from whatever is left of the hesitancy and I will say, you know, vaccine paralysis? Yes, absolutely. So um, as I mentioned earlier, we have member advisory councils. So uh -huh. when you come from a medical lens or clinical background, you speak all these big words. And so <laughs> you're like, yeah. I don't know what that means. So I'm just not going to do it. And so the hesitancy that we experience, again, historically, mm -hmm. um, I don't know enough about it. I'm not going to be yeah. the first person to try yeah. it. Let me see what somebody else right, experiences right. when they take it. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, I'm going to wait and see <laughs> what happens. So we asked our members firsthand, yeah. what is it that you need to make you feel more comfortable? So it's all about providing education, asking what is the best way that you would like to receive information? Yeah. Um, That's good. Who, who do you look up to? Like, who do you need to hear from? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in the minority community, there's um, a grandma, a aunt, somebody has like the, um, the voice the of the family. And if she says to do it, I'm going to yeah. do it. So mm -hmm. I just think it just depends on you. You have to ask those that you are working with, what is it that they need? And generally it boils down to communication and communication mm -hmm. that one can understand. We can't use those big terms. We have mm -hmm. to bring it down to, this is what this is. If you have questions, you get to ask questions. <laughs> um, and if I don't know the answer to something, I need to say, I'm not sure, but I will find out. So mm -hmm. it's all about communicating being yeah. aware, saying what it is that you do know. And if you don't know something to share that with people too, so that they have, they can make an informed decision. decision. Thank you. All right. I would like to add to that, if I may, real quick. Um, we also realize that we have to develop relationships within our communities. Um, mm -hmm. We have to implore and bring in community leaders who are trusted, such as faith-based organizations, such as individuals within those community. Mm -hmm. communities who our membership or individuals look to um, as trusting individuals to provide the, that communication and those messages. Um, so again, we cannot do this alone. We mm -hmm. have to bring in those trusted community partners. And Donna, uh, just asking you another question, what impact does having the vaccines have on our everyday lives? So having the vaccines impacts our everyday lives and we're seeing the results of this today as we think about moving <clears> out of the pandemic um, we're seeing herd immunity and what that means is that the majority of americans are now immune to covid 19 right now when i say immune to covid 19 i want to preface and also say that when we talk about vaccines back to uh, Keisha's earlier statement, a vaccine is providing an ingesting or in, infusing a strain of a disease into an individual, right? That's why we have seen certain resurgence of certain um, strains, such as the Omicron, creating increased COVID-19 numbers. While we provide uh, immunity, what we know today is that we cannot provide complete immunity to all strains moving forward. So that's a message that we need to make sure that we're getting in, out to our membership and to our populations. That's yes, we, we basically are messaging, get your COVID-19 vaccine, you'll be immune to COVID-19. And then we saw, we see these resurgence of new strains. And that is why it's so important that yes, while we may still get COVID-19, it's not going to have the same severity and impact. 
that's why it's important to get those those vaccines. And, and it's ironic you mentioned that because, you know, in April, we just heard about Vice President Kamala Harris, who's vaccinated and boosted, yes. still tested positive for COVID. And this question is for Keisha. Uh, how do we how do we how do we get the word out and let people know that vaccines keep the community safe when we still see that? Yes, um, it goes back to like what Donna stated, that we have to find out who are mm -hmm. the voices of our communities. Um, get community stakeholder buy-in. You have to. Um, and just share information. Look at your trusted sources. Partner with the health department because we do not have all the information. Um, you want to partner with the health department. Here in Indiana, we have a strong relationship with IIC, which is the Indiana Immunization Coalition. Mm -hmm. um, so those would be the experts. And um, two of the things that are also an issue as it relates to um, vaccinations is access and transportation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it may be that I work different hours and I can't get to the doctor to get my vaccination. Or um, here in Indy, we have these huge um, vaccination clinics at the mm -hmm. Indianapolis Speedway. And so you have to drive up and all of these things. Well, if I don't have a car, I may not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So one of the benefits that we offer to our members that are interested in being vaccinated and not just for COVID vaccine, vaccination, yeah. any vac vaccines, we are having vaccination clinics is that we provide um, free transportation to the event should they want to attend. Um, and then we also just want to make sure that we are going to the community. So mm -hmm. we partner with community-based organizations, faith-based organizations to set up clinics mm -hmm. in the neighborhood where the transportation, the time, you don't have to worry about all those things because we want to meet our members literally where they are mm -hmm. out in the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. You're welcome. That in itself is amazing. Now, Donna, how does Care Source support members who receive their vaccines when needed? So we are supporting our membership through numerous platforms here in Ohio. And I know the same, I'll refer to Keisha here in just a moment. Here in Ohio, since 2021, we have again been staging multiple COVID vaccine events. During those events, we offer, have been offering through the Ohio Department of Medicaid uh, gift cards for vaccinations, including the first dose, as well as now we're offering for booster doses as well. So this supports our membership in regards to um, any additional needs that they may have to either obtain the COVID vaccines or afterwards. In addition, we ensure that our members are getting back to additional COVID vaccine events or Department of Health to get that second dose as needed. Uh, and we also offer uh, support to our membership in regards to any follow-up questions or concerns that they may have or any health issues issues that they may have as a result of the COVID vaccines. So we've worked with our uh, providers, our community-based organizations, and our members so that they are aware of opportunities to receive the COVID vaccines, of our gift cards or rewards programs, follow-up um, second shots or boosters. So we ensure that our membership is aware of any additional needs as a result of receiving those COVID vaccines. And we have a, a similar model here in Indiana as well. Um, we have member incentives. We have reward programs. Um, we also have provider incentives as well. So we work with all of the pieces of the puzzle. We're working with our members, the community providers, um, community-based organizations that we incentivize um, not only the COVID vaccination, but also we have member rewards programs for all vaccines to ensure that our babies, our kids, our moms are all um, up to date on their vaccinations, especially it's huge um, when it's time for a kiddo to go to kindergarten. If they haven't been up on those vaccinations, then um, they may just be like, oh, my God, mom, I don't want to go to school because I have to get all these shots. So we try to make sure that there's an immunization schedule. So we try to make sure that all of our members are up to that schedule so it just doesn't feel so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Um, for families and for kids. Yeah. Um, I know you guys all know someone that does not like shots, um, but so we try to introduce it to them early. So uh, when you keep up with that schedule, um, it's like, okay, one or two here um, and not 
17 or 18, I'm being, I'm exaggerating, but not that many when it's time to go to school. All right. right. Well, Keisha and Donna, thank you very much. We're going to take a quick, uh, a quick break right here to hear from um, our friends at CareSource Indiana. We'll be right back. Imagine a health insurance company that could look beyond doctor's offices and hospitals and help its members find what they need to actually live healthier lives, like a stable job, dependable transportation, or a safe place to live. Well, that health insurance company is not only real, but making a real difference in Indiana right now. At CareSource, we're removing barriers. We're improving lives. We're reimagining health insurance. Okay, um, Keisha, I, I'm just, we're going we're gonna to keep it right here with you. Okay. Uh, and uh, the care source is known for going beyond uh, traditional health care. So how do social determinants of health factor into minority health? Social determinants, uh, I'll let you explain that, but, but how does that factor in? Yes. Okay, so this is the feel-good part of my job. This is really what attracted me to care source. Like <laughs> yes, this is the, the feel-good part. Okay. So all along, I'm thinking, you know, medical insurance, oh my gosh, it's insurance mm -hmm. is a claim that's going to the yeah. doctor, right? Right. Um, but with care source having a nonprofit status, um, our care source was started originally by a social worker. So social workers, social needs, they have a clear understanding that what happens inside of the doctor's office, that's not just the whole person. So there are so many things that have an impact on one's health. So it, it is where you live. It is, do you have access to food? Do you have access to transportation? Do you feel safe? Do you have all the basic needs, essentially, that you need to be able to survive. So we found out that um, if I am concerned about what I'm going to eat, my next meal, my clothes on my back, if my kids have adequate childcare, um, I am not going to make my health a priority. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that all the other things are aligned mm -hmm. first um, before I worry about medication, going to the doctor because life is always happening. So the social services and social determinants of health is basically all of the other things that have a significant impact on our health and health outcomes. Um, when I am employed, educated, all of those things, mm -hmm. um, I'm not necessarily in crisis. So now I can focus more on my health. I can focus more on making sure that I'm taking my prescriptions. Um, and not using the emergency room as primary care because there's been a crisis. So essentially, social determinants of health, um, we have a whole department, which is the life services department, that focuses on supporting our members that have those barriers. Um, we use a life coaching model in that we help our members identify their own barriers because it's not for me to say this is a barrier for you. Um, we definitely believe that our members are an expert in their own lives. Mm -hmm. um, and so whatever they deem to be a priority or something that they want to work on, we help them. Um, we definitely have a do with, not do for model. Um, it is a program that is voluntary. Um, our members can opt mm -hmm. in to work with the coach again for up to two years. Um, to find out what is it that they want to do. Mm -hmm. They may not know. So we have different assessments um, that they can take. Um, we connect them to resources that already exist in the community. Mm -hmm. um, so it is just, like I said, it's the feel, it's the, it's the feel good thing. Um, mm -hmm. Just to know that we use a holistic approach. Um, yeah. Yes, we are concerned about cost of care and all of those things, but mm -hmm. we know in order to have an impact on that, we need to look at the entire member um, and we also know that certain areas, certain demographics, certain mm -hmm. individuals experience disparities. So we're looking to close that gap, too. We are not right. um, blind to the fact that there's inequities that happen everywhere. Um, so we just love that we're able to address yeah. those things and take that into consideration when we are developing new programs, incentives um, and all of those things. Donna, do you have anything? I could talk about this all day. So. <laughs> uh, you did an awesome job with that, Keisha. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
<laughs> I well, you know what? And it's funny that you asked Donna if she want to add because I was going to say the same thing, Donna. You know, you touched on the mission, Keisha, but if Donna, uh, just a, you know, if that's all, but if you had anything you want to add about the company's mission and what Care Source does, because Keisha did give a great description. <laughs> no, Keisha covered, she did a great, awesome job with that. So, yeah. okay. again, we focus on our membership and what their needs are. Um, that's our focus. You know, yes, we are managed care. Our goal is to pay costs and provide the best outcomes. But at the same time, we know that we cannot do this for our members. Our members need to be empowered to do this for themselves. Well, I want to take a second and thank you guys both for taking <laughs> some time out and having a conversation with all four of us <laughs> representing the Midwest. Donna Gabber and Keisha Zachary representing CareSource. Thank you guys so much. The information that you gave us is mm -hmm. we can use this with our friends and our family that were hesitant on getting the vaccines and we can actually enlighten them on how it helps our community in the long run. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. And yeah. before you guys get out of here, you have to tell us where we can learn more about Carasaurus and facts about vaccines. Most definitely. So if you'd like to learn more about Carasaurus and the opportunities that we provide regarding vaccines, please visit our website at caresource.com. You can also connect with your local health departments and or your providers or doctors because they have all of this information. Again, our goal is to increase our vaccine numbers across every state um, and make sure that our members are, are getting the vaccines that they need. Absolutely. You hit that on the head. This was so much valuable information. Thank you, ladies, for your dedication to our communities and the, and the services that you guys provide for us. We appreciate you so much. And make sure that you guys like this video and share it. You might save a life. It might be yours. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. And thank yes. you for all you do as well. Exactly. We appreciate this. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.